Hey everyone, welcome back to theCUBE's on the ground coverage of PagerDuty Summit 22. I'm your host, Lisa Martin. I'm very excited to be joined by Manjula Talareja, the SVP and Chief Customer Officer at PagerDuty. Welcome to the program. Thank you, Lisa. It's great to have chatted with you this morning as well. Isn't it? I have had the great fortune of watching her fireside chat that Manjula did um, with, is it Lo Logic Monitor? Yes, that was the your... CEO of Logic Monitor. Yes. Yes. yes, and I thought, she's got great energy, we're going to have a great conversation. <laughs> So Thank let's you. talk about the customer experience these days. One of the things I think that's been in very, very short supply mm -hmm. in the pandemic is patience. I know it's been in short supply with me and of course in our consumer lives, in our business lives. The customer experience though has been something that every company needs to really pin their businesses on because if it's not a good customer experience, that customer goes right to social media, they churn, they they leave, but they, they take others down with them. Talk to me about how the customer experience fits into this year's summit, especially for this, we have to be ready for everything in a digital world environment. I love this question. And the reason I love this question is, I even look at my own behavior, but before we get into that, let's talk about data. I was just reading an article, McKenzie did a survey, did you know that from pre-COVID to today, customer interactions that have moved to digital are from 41% to 65%? That's exponential. It is. That's huge. And guess what? We've all got impatient. We've become like our kids. <laughs> and I think about myself as an individual. If I need Tide right now to do my laundry, I need it right now. So if I go to a Costco website, to order it so that it can get delivered in the next hour. And if even if there's a second glitch on it, I'll swap over to Amazon or I'll swap over to Target. That's what's happening in real world, whether it's B2C or it's B2B. And why is it important to the points we are making in terms of ready for anything in the world of digital everything? It's important because customers are impatient. It's a digital world. I don't walk into the store to do any interactions anymore. And the reality of all of this is it's grounded on trust. Customers have to trust you. And the vendor of choice, not only in the B2B, but a lot in the enterprise and the B2B world, it's about trust. Right. And what does PagerDuty do? PagerDuty is at the heart of this. PagerDuty is at the heart of making every second matter. And every second is equal to money. Absolutely. And it's about customer experience. And it isn't about just the experience of an employee who may not sleep at night because they got a disruption due to an incident, which is also super important during the mass resignation. Right. But it is also about the CEO agenda and the boardroom because how are CEOs driving customer trust in order to keep customers and drive this new era of digital everything as digital transformation is occurring. Well, I know PagerDuty is doing that. I had the chance to watch um, CEO Jennifer Tejada's uh, mm -hmm. fireside chat, her keynote, and then her fireside yes. chat with the CEO of DocuSign. And, yes. and you, the story was very bi-directional, very mm -hmm. symbiotic in terms of the trust that PagerDuty has in DocuSign and DocuSign has in PagerDuty. Mm -hmm. But talk to me, as the chief customer officer, what is it that's unique about how PagerDuty works with its customers, 21,000 plus now, mm -hmm. to build and maintain that trust, especially in such volatile times? You know what is really cool? I joined PagerDuty a little less than two years ago. In the next few days, it'll be two years. And what do I find exciting as a chief customer officer and the go-to-market team's differentiation versus other customers? We are a born SaaS company. And what do we have access to from our customers? We have access to their operations data. And that combination of our core values that is championing the customer and the data science that we have about how customers are using our data is our differentiation. That's the magic. So if you think about why PagerDuty is bringing this level of trust to the customers, it's because we know how many, and let's take an example. 
employee retention, mass resignation. We know which employee was called how many times at night during an outage. Can we give that guidance to managers and leaders in order to drive that trust? Absolutely. And on the other hand, we are driving amazing return on investment at the executive levels for the customer experience that they are driving. So PagerDuty is becoming the trusted advisor all the way from practitioners where we are in improving their work-life balance to the executive levels. Improving work-life balance is so critical. There was uh, a stat that Sean Scott shared this morning that, that was looking at the amount of work volume from 2020 compared to 2021, and 42% of people said, I am working more hours. Mm -hmm. I, I don't think I've ever heard anyone say, can I work more, please? No, that work-life balance is critical, but the, also the ability to deliver that seamless digital customer experience that we all expect um, and, and to get it right the first time is critical, but using that customer data, as you're saying, empowering the organizations, not just the customer support folks or the SREs or, or the DevOps folks, but all the way up to the C-suite to ensure that their brand reputation is valuable, it's maintained, and that trust is really bi-directional, that's the secret sauce. You're absolutely right. You know, there's a different dimension to this as well. We think about how are we using customer data in order to achieve the results we want. Three vectors here. Number one is, we'll use customer data to really understand what is best in class on uptime, what is the best in class to reduce noise during alerts, what is best in, uh, best in class for customer service operations. And because we have customer data, we can benchmark. We can benchmark what industry, what's happening in the financial services industry? What's happening in the technology industry? What's happening in the retail industry? Our customers love that. So we will share with them, the customer success organization, especially the customer success managers, will go in and meet with the customers and say, this is where you stand in reference to your peers. And customers love hearing bet, that. Yeah. This is their differentiated value proposition. Right. The second thing that our customer success managers do is share with the customers, this is where you are in reference to your peers in your vertical, other vertical, but let me tell you how you can improve your deployment, the performance of our technology, and your whole operating model as a result of the data we've got. There's the proactiveness that's another differentiator of, of what I was hearing today from PagerDuty, that you're enabling those CSMs to be proactive when so often many are reactive and it's the customer that's found the problem first. Yes. yes. I'll even talk more about the reactive to proactive. We build a methodology, and I'm sure Sean Scott covered it as well, which is our maturity curve. Moving from reactive to proactive, because so many of our customers are saying, we are reacting when we have a disruption on our digital uh, platform. But 30% of the times, we are hearing from customers before we are hearing from ourselves. So how do we become proactive? And how does our data science actually start showing the signs when a potential disruption could occur? And that is about moving reactive to overall proactive. I'd also like to add one more dimension to this. You know, when customers are doing really well, they're optimized on our platform, they don't want to hear from our post-sales organization all the time. They want a human touch when they need it. They want a digital touch when they need it. By using our data and our data science, we are becoming one of the best world-class customer success organizations in the world. And you ask why? The reason is because we are using data science in order to build, and we have built, the early warning system. The early warning system tells us how every single of our customers is doing in terms of both their growth as well as the risk that they may leave us. So if a customer is very healthy, on a scale of one to 100, if we have a healthy customer, 
we will engage with them potentially just digitally and engage with them with our services, our customer success team, and our entire post sales organization when there is an optimization and when they really need us. So data science is being used not only in terms of giving customer the right information to grow them, but how we interact with them as well. That's brilliant. And there's so many organizations that I talk to across industries that cannot get that right. And so customers are being contacted too frequently. They may have said, I opted out, I don't want, and then suddenly that, that the first responders, the incident responders is marketing. But that happens so frequently and you think, but there's an opportunity there. It's not rocket science, but it's about leveraging that data in an optimal, smart way. But you guys are light years ahead of a lot of other companies that we, haven't figured that out. No, we are leading edge. And we're leading edge because we are a born SaaS company. And we've got effective operations data of the customer. And we have some of the best data scientists and the analysts within my organization looking at this, engaging with the customer, and only optimizing. The magic is data science and humans coming together to engage with customers and drive customer success for the customer and ultimately building their customer experience for their customers. Let's talk about some of the numbers, Mandula, because they're really impressive. Mm -hmm. I was looking at some stats. Mm -hmm. Your page or duties renewal rates are over 95%. Your growth is incredible, just coming off the, the biggest quarter ever. But also, the gross annual benefit from customers, talk to me about that alone. That can be up to 10 million US dollars. These, re, these tangible business outcomes that page or duty is delivering to customers are significant. And again, it's based on data science. This is not making, you know what traditional companies do? Traditional companies will go to the customer and say, tell me your business imperatives. Tell me your, um, what are the business problems you're solving? Our, because we have the data science, we have ROI ranging from 300 to 900%. Very impressive. Within a couple of months. We think about it. If we are able to drive incidents that are very, very significant, and I know you've got the numbers in terms of growing or uh, reducing the workload on very expensive engineering uh, individuals within the organization from, I believe, 30 to 125,000, and I know you have those numbers, think about if 30% of your organization focuses just on innovation and product development versus on an incident. And their work-life balance, their quality of life, increases the retention of the employees, and yet the company is only driving their growth. That is why our customers love us. That is why our renewal rates are greater than 95%. That's why our net retention scores are greater than 120% over five quarters. And that is why we have more than 30% growth year over year, quarter over quarter. When I saw that stat, Manjula, about you know, the number of incidents reduced, that translates to employee productivity and, and looking at it in terms of FTE from a quantity perspective. That's the first time I've seen a company, and I, I interview a lot of companies, actually put it in that perspective. And I thought, that is huge. That's how organizations should be talking about that rather than reducing FTEs or going, we were victims of the great resignation. It's look at the impact that can be made here by using data science, by using the right mix of human and automation together. It's, that's the first time. So congratulations to you and Pager Duty. Thank that's the first you. time I've seen that. And I think everybody needs to be working to be able to explain it that way, especially the fact that we're still in a volatile environment. Absolutely. It's about customer experience, but it is just as much employee experience. There is yeah. so much that the industry is talking about. That's top of mind for board levels. That's top of mind from CEOs. How do I retain my employees and drive greater operational efficiency? And now with the macroeconomic challenges that are, are occurring in terms of inflation and, in, and the cost to serve and increasing the profits cust uh, our customers are making, operational efficiency is becoming even more important so that the employees are focusing more on innovation rather than downtime or disruptions. And it's actually about 
growing the business rather than just running the business. And if we can optimize running the business, growth is what our customers are looking for. Right. I always think, and we're almost out of time here, but I always think the employee experience and the customer experience are like this. Mm -hmm. And they should be. But it's critical to optimize both. How do you, when you talk to some of those big enterprise customers, we had DocuSign on the main stage this morning, but I was looking at the website and, mm-hmm. and three that jumped out to me that I use, Peloton, Salesforce, and Slack. Mm-hmm. How do you advise them? You have this wealth, this gold of information on customers. This is how you need to leverage it in the right way to grow your business. What are some of the, the top three things you recommend those customers do, for example? The So let me talk about a couple of customers as an example. There are uh, some customers of ours in the retail business, or it is a telecommunication company that is trying to increase their um, uptime from 98.7% to three nines, as an example. Or a tech company that doesn't even know that they were down for six hours in one small part of their business, and we're trying to figure out how do we solve for that as customers are overall complaining. So for us as a organization, the magic is, again, bringing data together, employee engagement. And what we do is we use the data to engage with the customers to ultimately understand what is their business value proposition. It's, you don't do it in isolation. You do it in what is the customer trying to achieve? Are they trying to achieve the best in class website? Are they trying to achieve increased operational efficiency? What are their metrics? What are their numbers? And we take our data, our people to marry all of that together. And that's the magic. I love it. I wish we had more time, Angela. We are out of time. But talking about the the value of the customer experience, the impact that is possible to be made leveraging technologies like PagerDuty, it's it's revolutionizing operations. It's revolutionizing customers, 21,000 plus, 1 million plus users at a time. It's awesome. You have to come back so we can talk more because I can know we're just scratching the surface here. Yes, we are. (laughs) This is a very, very exciting area right now. And it is a great opportunity for chief customer officers officers on really rallying the whole company on championing the customers because whether it's our products our capabilities it's really a major transformation happening in the in the industry and we need to stay very close to it absolutely thank you so much Manjula for joining me today it's been such a pleasure talking to you I look forward to seeing you again real pleasure Lisa to get (laughs) to know you and the conversation was awesome good thank you For Manjula Telraja, I'm Lisa Martin. You're watching theCUBE's on the ground coverage of PagerDuty Summit 22 from San Francisco. Thanks for watching and bye for now.